Turning back now to our special coverage of World Alzheimer's Day. This is the USF Health's Bird Alzheimer's Center and Research Institute, where patients living with dementia and their loved ones go for help after the devastating diagnosis. And Jameson Euler is live there today with a look at why now more than ever, it's becoming a beacon of hope. Jameson. Yeah, it is, Wendy. Doctors and researchers on the front lines of fighting Alzheimer's disease will tell you we are closer now to a cure than ever before. There are promising drugs on the horizon that treat the disease, but for any hope of treatment or even a cure, there needs to be research and clinical trials, both of which are happening right here in the Bay Area. They were Paul and Eloise from West Virginia. For Connie Lesko, remembering the good old days with her parents. They're young mm -hmm. and they were fun. Sometimes requires a picture and deflecting the days she would like to forget. Unfortunately, so many of the memories that I have my parents now was through their disease. More than a decade has gone by since both of Connie's parents slowly passed away from Alzheimer's. But a daughter never forgets the day her mother can't remember who she is. I always knew that she knew we belonged to her. She couldn't call our name, but she knew we were hers, you know? But it's the unknown that haunts Connie and other children of Alzheimer's parents. Research shows that those who have a parent or sibling with Alzheimer's are more likely to develop the disease than those who do not. Then the reality is, hey, is this gonna happen to me? Am I gonna put my kids through this? Answering that question would not take Connie Lesko very far. Within months, she discovered one of the largest freestanding Alzheimer's research centers in the United States was right on the University of South Florida's campus, the Bird Alzheimer's Center and Research Institute, where groundbreaking studies and clinical trials have been going on for nearly two decades. We have a, an active outpatient clinic, we have an active clinical trial program, and then we have three floors of basic scientists looking for new ways to understand this disease and target treatments that we can then test in the clinic. The Institute was recently on the front lines of the original trial that gave approval to one of the most promising yet controversial Alzheimer's treatment drugs ever discovered called Aduhelm. Another cutting edge study happening right now at the bird is research that might possibly show a tie between the health of the gut in relation to cognitive decline of the brain. Our gut has as many as neurons as our brain has. So that's the second brain living in our body. Alzheimer's disease is thought to be caused by the abnormal buildup of proteins in the brain. One of the proteins involved is called amyloid. The deposits form plaques around brain cells. Diagnosing Alzheimer's has made quantum leaps for when Dr. Smith began researching the fatal disease 20 years ago. When I was first doing this, it, we were in a place where in order to diagnose Alzheimer's disease officially, you actually had to have an autopsy and look at the brain under a microscope to tell people, yes, you have the plaques and tangles that are characteristic of this disease. Then 10 years ago, doctors were able to diagnose the disease with PET scans while patients were still alive. Part of the problem, though, is that still, 10 years later, no insurance will pay for that kind of scan, and it costs about $4,000. So we do have the ability to do it, um, but it's very expensive, and most people can't afford that. What do you see? Unless you participate in clinical trials like Connie has, which can pick up the expensive testing costs and in many cases put patients in groundbreaking studies that can be game changers. She recently took part in a study in Sun City Center that can identify a single protein in your blood that will show if you are at a higher genetic risk for getting Alzheimer's. Patients would then decide if they want to proactively take an Alzheimer's drug called Denonimab, which is on the FDA's fast track for possible approval by 2023. I mean, I reached out, I was the very first patient. In the more recent years, some blood biomarkers have become available, blood tests for Alzheimer's. Other medications that aim to stunt or stop the disease are also being tested here in the Bay Area, either through pills or infusions, and more recently, a nasal spray. But Dr. Smith says so many prime participants opt to forego being pioneers in the advancement of modern medicine because of fears of being a guinea pig. My hope is that you know, by identifying these people and treating them early on, maybe we'll have kind of the last generation of people with dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. They call Alzheimer's the long goodbye. For Connie, she is certain the first person to survive Alzheimer's disease has already been born. And people must participate in clinical trials. 
um, and not fear them. Um, because without the clinical trials, in, coming from every avenue, um, we're not, you know, we're not going to get there. And there is research and cognitive tests that don't test medications, just your brain function. Researchers say while they are making progress on our local clinical trials, the one area they are still struggling with is diversity. And why that matters is because, according to the Alzheimer's Association, blacks and Hispanics are one and a half to two times more likely to get Alzheimer's than white Americans. The Bird Alzheimer's Institute provides several services for patients and their loved ones. They produce a caregiver podcast to help provide practical information for family caregivers. They have monthly support groups and caregiver workshops. The Institute is also a pioneer developing a mobile memory research unit to take Alzheimer's disease research directly out into senior communities. One of the ways the Alzheimer's research done here is supported is through the fundraising efforts of our community. Ahead, we'll show you how one family is working to make a difference all across the country. Wendy, we'll send it back to you.